So good morning, good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are. My name is Matt Burgess, and along with Neil Caden, I'm going to be leading our discussion today, which, in case you haven't seen the agenda, is a roundtable discussion, my favorite JIRA, or in some cases, my least favorite JIRA, depending on the kinds of problems that that feature might be giving you. So before we dive into that discussion, uh, please feel free to sign in on the Etherpad if you haven't already. I see that Jennifer has very kindly posted the link to the Etherpad there in the chat. Thanks, Jennifer, for doing that. So if you haven't signed in already, please go ahead and do so. As usual, before we dive into our main topic, we always take a few minutes for any project reps who are on the call to take a few minutes and talk about their project statuses. I know that Salwa is going to give a short update on the communication project. Salwa, do you want to start us off and go ahead and do that right now? Uh, sure. Um, so the uh, for those of you who may not know, the Sakai Communications Project is uh, basically an effort to create a campaign to promote Sakai. And uh, it was started last year at Marist College, and this year uh, at Texas State, uh, a class of uh, students in a PR campaigns course uh, did a lot of research using some of the Marist materials, but they also did their own uh, survey and um, other research on Sakai and its use, uh, mainly focusing on the US um, with the idea that uh, what we're interested in is keeping uh, schools that are using Sakai right now, keeping them, uh, you know, in the Sakai uh, area rather than moving off to other uh, learning management systems. And so uh, what they have come up with uh, and what they presented to me and to Neil and um, Josh Barron last week was the results of their work. And they also had a, a number of specific um, recommendations. Um, and Neil, you can uh, uh, speak later after I finish if, if I've missed anything. Uh, but basically uh, what they said was that the um, Sakai websites are um, not designed in a great way to be uh, sort of user-friendly and easy to find things, to find information about Sakai. And they had a, a number of specific recommendations about the website. Um, they also uh, talked about how uh, there, are, there are several sites uh, in which, at which you can get information about Sakai, but it's, uh, it's very scattered and, and there's no um, there's no focused message really around what Sakai is. Uh, and that's one of the, our, our issues is that we don't really have a brand. And what we need to do is come up with a brand and then, and then send that message out in a focused way. Um, they also recommended a uh, newsletter that would go to members in the Sakai community, um, just keeping people up to date and giving people a sense that, you know, there is a community out here and this is what we're doing. Uh, because there are a lot of people, obviously, that are part of the community but aren't on these calls and don't know uh, necessarily what's going on. Uh, they also recommended creating what they called CVs, uh, which are basically profiles of individuals within the community um, talking about what they're doing uh, in terms of, you know, they could be developers, they could be instructional design people, they could be support people, just anyone that's in the community, again, to give people an idea of, of um, who we are. Um, and then they talked about uh, the fact that we have two, I believe we have two Facebook sites, uh, but neither one is really updated. Um, and then uh, apparently most of the community um, uses LinkedIn and Twitter, and they, what they suggested is that we focus on those two uh, social media outlets and maybe even completely drop uh, Facebook since there doesn't seem to be much, uh, much use there and it's not being um, updated regularly. Uh, so those were their recommendations, and I think um, 
uh, what we need at this point beyond uh, what this class has done and what Maris did is to have some um, interest from this group or, you know, if you, maybe you know other people within your institutions that might be interested in uh, sort of taking up the mantle from this class and moving forward because what happens you know a lot of times is these projects uh, happen and then they kind of go away and nobody really remembers or pays attention to them um, but I think this is an important project and something that would benefit the entire community so um, so I'm hoping that um, that there will be people uh, who will be interested to sort of continue the effort Thanks, Alwa. I, I think that uh, that sounds great. Neil, do you have anything that you want to add to that since you were part of that presentation also? Yeah, I guess a couple things. Um, one is that the class did do a fantastic job and they had some really great ideas. Um, there's a couple of questions I wrote back to them that I have or suggestions I have in terms of what I was thinking would be the right messages for the community. And I think that should be something that maybe gets vetted a little bit in the community. Um, to figure out what would be the most effective. There's a lot you can say about Sakai, right? I mean, there's the open source aspect of it um, and our, even our particular license, which I know isn't something that gets people really excited, but the way Sakai is licensed enables a lot of what happens in the community. Um, and of course, there's tons of features and there's the standards we have with LTI leading the way in LTI and some other standards we're looking at. Um, so I think the message still needs to fi be figured out and worked. I really love their social media approach, so I'm really thinking about that. Um, I think the website ideas were really good too. Bear in mind, we did put a lot of effort, Aperio did, into both redesigning the Aperio website and the Sakai website not that long ago. I think it's vastly improved over what it had been, but I did think that the class did come up with some cool designs. Um, or cool ideas for it. And of course, resources is always an issue, right? So if we're gonna do a redesign of a website, where does the money come from? It's possible, I saw a couple of things where maybe we have low hanging fruit that we could do for very, very little money um, uh, for the website. But, but it's still on the big picture of things, it's where do the resources come from to make all these things happen? Um, it's not something that can just be one person. And of course, they only, know, they only know a few of us in the community like me and Josh Barron and Sawa. So naturally they put, placed us on the resources list. <laughs> Who's doing everything? Which of course I, I would be on that list, but I don't know uh, if Sawa, if you have to, We'll have time or not to, you know, keep moving things forward. And certainly, Josh, Bar you know, Josh seems like he's really, really busy with like analytics work, and uh, Maris is helping in a lot of other ways in Sakai. So I think figuring out kind of um, what the resourcing is and and what things are, you know, kind of low hanging fruit and we can take advantage of, and what messaging we want are all things. And you know, also I think it might be good to, and this is some discussion we've had of getting the commercial affiliates involved because they all do marketing as well, and they're an important part of. Uh, of our um, ecosystem. So those are some of my thoughts, you know, kind of just turn it around in my brain, but I don't have a plan of what the next steps exactly are, except that the CV idea that I'm running that by Ian, which is to get key community members, interview key community members, which we sort of have some of that on the web, they weren't in, in a CV format, and so give a little bit more about the people who are involved um, in the uh, community. I think that would be really, really cool. So those are some of the thought. Again, those are kind of like off the top of my head, not a very formed, you know, <laughs> not a very formed uh, dissection of it. But they did do a great job, and it was it was fun working with them. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds like they did a really great job. Gave you guys a lot of great feedback. I guess my only question at this point would be if there are members of us, for example, on these calls who would like to be more involved in this. What would you guys recommend about getting more involved in this particular project? Do we already have a working group for this? And if so, when do they meet? Or how should we get involved moving forward? So I think that might be a great question for me and Salwa to maybe um, talk about offline if Salwa, if you want to do that. Uh, typically, uh, you know, um, I see some of the comments out there. Cool. Uh, uh, so I think that's a really good question, Matt, is what are the next steps and, and having and maybe it makes sense to have a, you know, kind of a marketing working group uh, if we could find, you know, some leadership on that and enough energy in the community that, that people want to participate. Um, and of course, that's something I'd also want to run by, uh, you know, up the Aperio chain a little bit and see how they feel about that um, and what 
kind of the scope of that would be and wouldn't be since uh you know, it's interesting having a marketing thought process in an open source project where our primary focus isn't marketing, and yet clearly marketing, or if you want to call it public relations or getting your message out, um, is is really important. You know, and that's part of the sustainability. So, um, I think it's a great question, and uh, happy to to talk with folks about that and come up with some ideas and see if we can get something going. That's yeah, great. Uh, Thanks, Neil. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Saul. We'll go right ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to talk about it, and, and I'm wondering if uh, I understand, you know, that we have, we also have a an upper level chain uh, in Aperio that needs to be involved, but I'm wondering if this is something that might be a good discussion for this group, uh, because there are there are certain uh, important things that we have to sort out, uh, you know, before we even begin any kind of. Uh, marketing campaign, one of which is what is our message, what is our brand, um, and and that might be a, I don't know, that might be an interesting discussion maybe for this group. I don't know. Absolutely. I mean, I think those things are good discussion topics for this group because those sorts of issues are really vital to the future of Sakai. I think it really is important to build a solid brand for Sakai because that's how it's going to be able to continue to compete in the larger educational marketplace with other products like Canvas or Blackboard or any of the smaller projects that may emerge over the next couple of years. So I think this is really important and I hope that we do talk about it more on these calls in the future. And Neil and Salwa, if you guys want to include me in those offline discussions, I'm really interested in this personally, so I'm happy to dive in there also. And I see that Terry has posted some comments in the chat about LAMP and about LAMP as a model uh, for reaching out to small institutions. And I have seen some of the documentation for that. And so I do agree that that might be something that we want to look at and use as a model as well. So thank you, Neil, and thank you, Salwa, for this report and generating some good discussion that will hopefully spin off into some even larger discussion later on. Neil, do you want to go ahead and give us some updates on Sakai 10.6 and also Morpheus? Yeah, I'll do a couple of uh, quick updates. Um, not, I don't want to take up too much time, but 10.6, um, the summary is, I guess, that I, I'm still optimistic we can get a 10.6 out by the end of the year. We will need community support, especially QA. We get what we call an RCO one which is our first release candidate and kind of how we for maintenance releases is we usually need one or two release candidates where we do as much testing as we can on them to feel confident that they're ready to be officially released um, and we're not quite at RCO one yet our big issue is the profile tool which had some infrastructure work that was completed in Sakai 11 and we really want to find a way to move that back into Sakai 10 because we think it will be uh, more sustainable and uh, you know, that's the big thing we're kind of trying to figure out right now, which I, we have a few, the Sakai core team has a few ideas and hopefully we'll figure that out like in the next week or so. And then I think from that point we could have an RCO one. So that's kind of uh, the thing. Once we get an RCO one, we will need um, help from the community on testing, uh, especially in Samago testing quizzes, kind of, you know, banging that around a bit uh, as well as, um, uh, the profile tool and we'll also be losing most likely the gallery feature in the profile tool where you add pictures in um, you can still have pictures for your profile just not you know making it like a, it has kind of a social media thing built into the profile tool where you can upload and share pictures but uh, from getting feedback from the community it doesn't seem like very many people are using that if anyone and um, it's a lot of work to kind of maintain that and it wasn't it broke during the uh, update to the um, wicket infrastructure for profiles. So that's kind of the summary on 10.6. Looking good for the end of the year, but we still need a bit of work and, and profiles the big, big thing there. So I'm hopeful. Um, I know there's some institutions that are really looking for 10.6. We have a lot of great work that's already gone in. So for those institutions that um, work off what's called the branch, uh, the 10 branch, we have um, 85 fixes in there, including I think it's like four or five blocker priority issues that are fixed and a dozen um, you know, critical fixes. So we have a pretty robust set of fixes already in 10.6, just figuring out that final piece, um, mostly with the profile tool. And we'll keep you posted. I'm, just gonna send out, I'm gonna send out a mailed email uh, in the near future, in the next couple of days probably. So people can see the issues that are involved. 
And with Sakai 11, we have, uh, <clears throat> um, with Sakai 11, um, we had a really great Morpheus skin discussion yesterday. Eduardo Rey from the University of Murcia in Spain uh, did a mock, did like a mashup. He took um, all the the ideas. He took a bunch of ideas from previous uh, from the submissions of the skin contest, and he came up with like a mock up. And then he showed the mock up, and we were able to have a discussion. And kind of the the essence of the discussion was that um, you know with Sakai Camp coming out with a uh, Greatbook NG, it looks like will be merged uh, very, very soon into master because um, we've got them past all the roadblocks on that as far as I know. Uh, and with Sakai Cam coming up in January, uh, I think that the, we should expect that Sakai 11, work on Sakai 11 and getting that out will really accelerate in the next upcoming months. And so given that, we don't want to put too big a scope on Morpheus. You know, we want to take basically all the great work that's been done. Neil, I don't know if you're still talking, but we yeah, may have lost you. It happens to me about almost exactly 20 minutes in every single meeting on Big Blue Button. It's really annoying. <laughs> but 20 minutes in every time, I, I lose audio and then I have to come back in. So, and then usually I'm able to get back in the rest of the way. Um, so I don't know where I left off. Where do I leave off, Matt? I'm trying to remember. Let's see. You were telling us that you were going to focus too much on Morpheus. You were going to focus on all the great features and take those great features. And then I think we lost you right at that point. So we didn't find out what you were going to do with those great features. Okay, good. Thank you. That, that's helpful. Um, well, I was saying that because we're anticipating um, the focus in Sakai 11 is really going to be accelerating going into the new year. We don't want to put too much into you know, we've already got a really great Morpheus uh, skin already in Master. And so what we don't want to do is expand the scope so much and make it something that's really going to delay the schedule significantly. So what we want to work on primarily is just beautifying um, Morpheus. So that's Eduardo Rey uh, is going to um, – Eduardo Rey is – I see the question there, Jennifer. Um, Eduardo Rey is going to work on a, a, a – another mock-up for next week, Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to look at that, and it's going to mostly focus, again, on beautifying what we've already got versus adding in a whole bunch of new features, and um, and then that way we can keep the scope small and hopefully move Sakai 11 as quickly as possible. Now, New York University has also volunteered to look at one new feature, which would be really, really cool for, manage, uh, for being able to access sites and be able to have, like, favorite sites and stuff. Hard to describe, it's easier to show in a mock-up, um, and it will, that requires development, and NYU is investigating. Like we said, NYU, you don't have to do that because we're, we're just going to keep moving forward. No, 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 we want to look at it, and we think it'll be really, really great. So um, so that's kind of where things stand. You know, keep the scope small, beautify what we've got, and NYU is investigating one, uh, you know, the possibility of adding one new feature and uh, more feature in Sakai, Sakai 11 to make site navigation much easier. Um, in terms of the goal for Sakai 11 release in 2016, uh, that's something where we really felt like we needed to get Gradebook NG because that's one of the big features in addition to Morpheus in Sakai 11. So we didn't feel like we had enough information to make a firm schedule. Uh, Gradebook NG um, does, looks like I said, as far as I know, all the roadblocks, roadblocks have been resolved to get Gradebook NG in, so I'm expecting that in pretty soon. And that'll be really exciting. Once we get that in master, I think we'll need some burn-in time. And I expect that we'll know a lot more at Sakai Camp in 2000, uh, in January 2016, meaning that you can't expect, I don't think it's realistic that we would have anything close to a release like January, February of 2016. So I think it's more over the next, um, you know, couple of months we'll be figuring out the schedule. Uh, I certainly am hopeful that we will release Sakai in 2016. I think there's a very high probability chance, and hopefully, you know, before the Aperio, Open Aperio uh, uh, conference in New York University. But again, until we do a little bit more due diligence on it, I, I think, you know, uh, I can't give a, a, a schedule that feels realistic at the moment. 
I'd like to, but, but at the moment I just don't think we have enough information. A lot of great progress in Sakai 11. Like I said, in master, we have like all the major features um, are already in there from that we that the community uh, was communicated to the community, um, except for Greybook NG. And that, that'll be the next thing. Sounds great, Neil. Thanks for all that detail and all those updates on uh, 10.6 and also 11. So that's a lot of information that we can take back to our institutions going forward. So thanks, Neil. Um, I see that Louisa is on the call. Louisa, is there anything that you want to say about LEAP? Are there any updates that you want to give about LEAP before we move on to the JIRA discussion? Um, hi, this is Louisa. Um, I don't have any updates about LEAP. Uh, possibly the UX group will discuss the uh, UX uh, testing during the Sakai virtual conference, uh, but that should come from Wilma. Uh, we haven't uh, discussed it in detail yet. But I do have an update about uh, Twisia. Um, so we had a meeting yesterday. Uh, we came up with the new name for Twistia. Uh, we called the APL Teaching and Learning Award uh, Awards. Sorry. So the acronym is now called Atlas. Does that make sense? Apario Teaching and Learning Awards. The, the S should be uh, located. I imagine uh, we are working on the. Uh, uh, modified rubrics and uh, uh, we welcome the 30 to the uh, panel and possibly OpenCast will be observers this round and so that's the progress we have so far so we are hoping that we could get the Atlas new page up and running on the Apparel website soon and to make a possibly announcement in mid-December uh, about the next round of application. That's about it. Thank you, guys. Sounds great. Thanks, Louisa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Neil, who has noted in the chat that there's a lot on the shoulders of the Atlas team. That was excellent. Thank you very much, Neil. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. So, does anybody else have any more updates before we dive in? Okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and just dive in here. I hope that some of you have at least made some notes about some JIRAs that you might like to bring up or talk about or describe how they've affected your community. I see that some people have already listed some JIRAs and made notes about some JIRAs on the Etherpad. And I see some here from Wilma, and I see that Wilma is on the call. So Wilma, if you don't mind, would you like to kind of dive in here and maybe take us through a couple of the JIRAs here that you've listed and tell us a little bit about them? We can hear you, but it's coming through really staticky, Wilma. Wilma, I'm sorry, but unfortunately, I don't really think we can even understand. We can hear that you're talking, but we can't really hear anything. So maybe we'll go ahead and move on and talk about some of the other JIRAs that are here on the list, and hopefully we can come back to you. Well, that's okay, Wilma. Um, so Wilma's going to try to reconnect. So let's go ahead and talk about some other JIRAs that are listed here. I see that Jose Mariano has listed some Samago JIRAs and also a Sakai JIRA here on the call. Jose, are you on the call by any chance? Yeah, he told, this is Neil, he told me that he probably would not be able to make the meeting, but he passed those on as one. If we had time, he would, he would love us to take a look at. Okay. Do we want to go ahead and take a look at a couple of these, Neil, or would you prefer that we start somewhere else? Did you have something in mind? 
Um, no, I have nothing in mind. Um, I see Adam put something down, uh, so I guess we could, um, you know, start with Adam if he wanted to talk with it, and then I'll I'll be happy to kind of take Mariano's um, issues and, and go through them. And do we want any sort of uh, video uh, right now in terms of the recording? I wonder if we want anything on, you know, on a screen share or anything. Oh, that might be helpful. Perfect. Let me see if I can pull up my screen here. Okay. Sorry, guys, give me just one second. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing there. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Okay, great. So we'll keep this up so that we can at least show this for the recording. Okay. And in fact, maybe we'll go ahead and get started with this one since this one is on my screen because I had made a note of it uh, to mention it here since it was something that has just come up at UVA. Um, this one, if you want to follow along on your own computer, is SAMIGO 2622, so SAM 2622. Uh, this is a download responses permission error. Um, so when you're uh, viewing scores, um, when you're in the test and quizzes tool and you click on questions and download responses, you get an error. Um, and you get an error that you do not have permission to access media. And then after that error is given, then the user is logged out of the application. Uh, this is something that UVA is working on actively right now. Um, and something that may be affecting your institution as well. I don't know if every institution has instructors who use tests and quizzes in this way to download all responses, but it is something that gets used a lot here at UVA and it is something that we are working on. So if you've encountered this also and you have addressed it in some way, please feel free to leave a comment in this JIRA. If you are also interested in having it fixed, uh, please go ahead and go on to Sakai Project JIRA and vote this issue up so that we know that other people are experiencing this and would like to see a fix also. Um, so this is definitely one of the JIRAs that we are working on at the moment and it has affected us because we do have a number of instructors who use this tool in this way. So please feel free to take a look and if you have thoughts, if you want to vote it up, uh, please do so. And I see in the chat that Wilma is back on by phone. So Wilma, you want to give it another go? Sure. Is that better now with my audio? That is much better. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. So the two JIRAs that, um, well, there's actually four because uh, there's kind of duplicate JIRAs going on. Uh, the first two have to do with rubrics um, in assignments. And if you look at, um, the uh, 29045 JIRA, and I, I put the link there in the Etherpad. Um, that one has to do with a contributed patch from Rutgers that they have um, a rubric feature that they are running in assignment two, and it looks like they've contributed a patch to have it be moved to assignment one or the core assignment tool. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the status is on this one, but um, I know that a lot of folks that we support, a lot of our clients, 
are very interested in, in having rubrics available in assignments. A lot of them actually use iRubric to have that functionality. So it would really be nice to have a native um, Sakai rubric option for those that don't want to go the third-party application route. Um, so I was just wondering, of the folks on the call, is this a, a, a JIRA that's of interest? This is definitely something that would be of interest to UVA. We are one of the schools that uses iRubric for this feature. So we are using a third party tool right now to have some rubric capability. This is definitely something that a number of instructors use, particularly instructors in schools like education. Uh, we have a large education school at UVA and we have a lot of instructors who use iRubric pretty heavily. So this would definitely be something of interest to us. I see Adam has voted plus one, Stephen has voted plus one in the chat. So absolutely, Wilma, I think this is definitely something of interest here. Neil does note, FYI, that he doesn't see a patch on this JIRA, so there's not a patch yeah, attached here yet. I don't yet. see it attached to it. It says contributed up at the top, so maybe um, we need to get in touch with some of the folks at, at Rutgers to see if they can go ahead and attach it. Um, but yeah, this one I thought would be, and it's duplicated by another one um, that's very similar, but uh, just judging on, on some of the requests that we get from folks, um, I know this would be a really good feature if it could be incorporated. So maybe if people could comment on it, that they're interested in it, it might get a little more um, energy behind it um, sort of pushing it forward. Absolutely. Sounds good, Wilma. And let's see, and then the other two JIRAs that I marked um, have to do with badges. And this is another thing that we get questions about all the time. Um, is there a way to have, you know, automated badging support in Sakai? Um, and currently there's not. I mean, we've set up um, the Sakai badging site at Longsite, which is uh, basically a series of conditional release things. But once somebody own, uh, earns a badge, then I actually have to manually award the badge using Credly, um, which can be laborious if you have a lot of badges to award. It'd be much nicer to have um, something more automated. Um, and so the um, Sakai 23803 is about adding active badge support. And, um, and there's another older related one um, also about badges, maybe tying it into the Profile 2 tool for displaying them. Um, but I know that this is an area also that people are really interested in, in terms of, you know, sort of micro-credentialing and allowing students to earn badges for completion of, um, you know, core competencies and things like that. So I think it would be a really nice thing to have in Sakai. And again, I was just kind of trying to get a feel for community interest. I know that's an industry trend, you know, the idea of micro, those micro certifications. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there was some discussion on the list uh, recently. I think Diego posted a, a link to the new Adobe LMS, which is more of a, um, it's more of a corporate audience, I think, that they're aiming at. Uh, but it's got a lot of, you know, sort of gamified badging type um, features to it. It's definitely a, a trend. Um, for um, you know, making things more uh, gamified, and so um, you know, it, it would be something that I think is worth investigating. Um, there's actually, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. I'll paste it into the uh, chat here in big blue button. There is um, a badging um, feature in Canvas. It's called Canva Badges, and it's um, supposedly LTI, but it's got a lot of very specific Canvas calls in it. Um, but I know um, Matt Jones at, at Longsite had looked at it at one point and thought that it could possibly, with some work, be um, adapted to Sakai. It would definitely take some work because it's not, you know, ready to go. But um, that was something that, you know, I was trying to see if, if there's enough interest that it could potentially be maybe a, a farm project or possibly um, could use some of the proceeds from the virtual conference to address 
one or either of, of the either the badging um, JIRAs or possibly the rubric JIRAs. So just kind of in the gathering feedback stage, but those were just some of the thoughts that I had. Wilma, this is Adam. Uh, I have just a general question regarding badging and imp possible implementation. Um, I'm wondering whether or not this is system specific because the two JIRAs refer to profile two, uh, meaning you badge the user, or whether or not there might be curricular applic applicability for instructors to create badges within a site and then those badges only apply to the user within the site. Right. I think the Canva badges code is is made sort of on a per course where you can assign you know badges to be awarded for completion of items in the course. And I think that by and large that would be um, the the more more common way of doing it. But it would also be nice to have a place to display the badges that a persons have earned um, in a more global sense. So once they've earned a badge in their English course, for example, maybe that badge could display in their profile, which could then be exposed in multiple courses. Thanks for the clarification. Um, I don't think, I think there would probably be limited applicability for my institution, but I can definitely see how there would be interest for this feature in the general community. Absolutely. Thanks, Wilma, for those jeers and those comments, and thanks, Adam, for those questions. They, I think, generated even more thought about what badges could do. Badges are still something that I am just starting to learn more about and think more about, about how they could work at UVA and how people might get interested in them and how we can use the tools. So that's really great. Thanks for all of that good discussion. Um, Adam, I know that you had another JIRA that you had listed here in the Etherpad, one that's fixed, but that was fun. And so do you want to take us through that one and talk to us a little bit about that one? Sure. I can uh, give you a little bit of background. And this JIRA was actually one that led me to suggest my favorite JIRA as a topic because uh, both Providence College and Roger Williams were being affected by this uh, in our uh, fall semester once we went live. And this was a fundamental functionality difference between Sakai 2.9 and Sakai 10. I'm happy to report that this is one of the uh, instances in which the community worked and um, uh, the functionality is, will be uh, returned in both 10.6 and 11. But um, to give you some background, um, under Sakai 2.9, if an instructor were to download all assignments uh, submitted and uh, get a zip file, they would see all of the students in the course or, you know, who were uh, – uh, import, or able to submit to the assignment, whether or not those students had made a submission or not. And this was important for instructors because they would then embed comments in the zip file, which would then be, of course, recompressed and uh, sent back up to Sakai. And then students that had no submission could see comments or explanations and then also potentially be given the opportunity to resubmit. Under Sakai 10, that functionality changed where in downloading the submissions, only students who had submitted were included in the zip archive. And so then instructors weren't able to add comments or grades for students without submission. Um, in the process of working through this JIRA and uh, getting attention, uh, my read on it, and this could be incorrect, is that the ability to download or see all students regardless of submission status was actually an unintended feature that was introduced in the process of assignment modification in 2.9. And that that um, behavior of the software reverted to its original intended behavior to only sub, uh, download students who had, in fact, submitted. Um, in the resolution of this JIRA, what they've actually done is added a checkbox to download all students. So they're giving the power to the instructor to choose whether or not all students should be included in the zip file. Thanks for that description, Adam, and 
I agree that this is a feature that, while it may have been unintentionally introduced, is something that is valuable to instructors. Instructors do like to see this. And just looking backward a little bit to what we were talking about at the beginning of the call with Salwa and Neil, I think that these kinds of features are a really important part of the open source brand and of the Sakai brand specifically. That here we have a case where instructors and institutions have an issue, have a specific request, have specific use cases surrounding it, and they have a place where they can bring those issues to be addressed and where they are addressed. And that's something that you don't necessarily see in other LMS products, but you do see here in Sakai because there is a community behind it and because it is open source and because it is customizable. You know, those things can be a really great backbone to our brand. And I think Jira's like this one, you know, an important feature that people wanted back that was restored are a great example of that. So thanks, Adam. That's really great. Yeah, and as Adam, as Adam mentioned, it is in 10.6, so we can get together and get 10.6 out. <laughs> then I think, uh, you know, the community will get that out, have that available uh, by the end of the year. Uh, we just need a lot of QA. We'll need some QA help once we get um, a little further with 10.6. So very, very, very soon, obviously, the end of the year is pretty close, especially with holidays. So be on the lookout for that. Absolutely. So this is a great time to reiterate Neil's pitch for QA. If you're available for QA testing, please dive in and help uh, because your instructors may want features like this one. So absolutely. Neil, do you want to talk a little bit about some of Jose's JIRAs at this point? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Let's see. Um, whoops, I'm on the wrong. So I me get the, uh, where did my... Window go here. Too many windows open. Um, yeah. Could you let me go back there? Where is the link to the? Uh, oh, here we go. The teaching and learning. Um, so uh, just as an FYI, uh, uh, Jose usually goes by Mariano, or at least that's what I call him. Um, he is uh, at the University of Murcia. Yeah and part of the S2U consortium, which is a Spanish-speaking um, universities and institutions um, in, and that collaborate actively together. And they, they contribute a lot to the community. It's very, very cool. Uh, so these were a few that he had suggested. So let's take a look at them, one, look at them going down the list. First one is Samago 1124, test and quizzes, images uploaded via the CK editor, that should be CK because it's been changed from FCK. Uh, for an exam that is not yet released to students, are visible to students from the site's resources tool. That, almost, that, that sounds like it would be worth doing. Let's see. Um, so does that make sense? And I'm looking not at the big blue button screen, so we can eek. <laughs> yeah. Right. It does seem like that's an eek, right? Because you wouldn't want to do that seems almost like a security thing for for the exam. Um, if students can look at images ahead of time. And uh, I see one of the latest comments on it, which is a couple of years old, was it would be nice if Samago created those resources automatically in a hidden folder with content with content accessible. Because there is functionality in Sakai now to do this. So I guess the idea would be, wouldn't it be cool if while the instruct, while you as an instructor are creating the exam, the default is as you add an image in, it adds it to the resource area as being hidden from students, uh, but still accessible to them. So it says, Louisa writes, use page order to hide the resources, page order tool. Oh, yeah, Louisa, I think that the, I think that the idea um, is that, if I'm understanding this right, is if you use the editor itself to upload the image into resources, the default is that it is visible. So there is a workaround where you can go into resources and use the page order tool and, excuse me, and uh, make it uh, invisible and still accessible. But for the, from an instructor perspective, it might be nice, it sounds like, if it was sort of hidden by default as follows about to say. 
Um, and Fawai said, if you use the lessons tool, it should be hidden by default question mark. So I don't know if lessons hides it by default and lessons, oh, it is? Oh, it's not, okay. Um, so that's the question here, and I think if we wanted something that were similar in the lessons tool, that would have to be um, probably a different JIRA, because it pro probably behaves a little bit differently. Huawei writes, any lessons folder will be hidden by default, and Louisa writes, you need to set up in resources or open, set up open dates and lessons. So that's the first JIRA. I don't know if we want any additional discussion on it or if that's uh, something people are interested in. In other words, we do have that functionality already in Sakai, I think, but it takes a little bit of extra work, and probably for an average instructor, um, it may not be obvious at all how to do that, or what the consequence is, of, you know, while they're while he or she is creating the questions. Absolutely, Neil. I think this is something that we will have to vote up because I know our instructors use tests and quizzes heavily, and this does strike me as a kind of security issue if students are able to see those images, because in some cases we have mathematics or engineering instructors who are using diagrams or using equations as images, and so if the students can see those ahead of time, that's going to be a problem. So this is definitely something that we will have to get on board with. Uh, I have a comment, uh, this is Luisa, uh, related issue. Uh, we have several faculties using the images in the tests and quizzes. Uh, what they usually do is uh, copy all those questions to a question pool. Uh, then they share it with other faculties or um, using other courses. But then if you upload those to the question pool, the image resides in the original course site where these quizzes are created. Uh, if those quizzes are downloaded from the question pool to other core sites, uh, the images are gone because they reside in the original site, not in the new site. So uh, it's a big problem. Can you hear me? Sorry? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, okay. Uh, so not, if... Not, I don't hear you. Yeah, I hope I explained it clearly. So if the... Um, quizzes with images uploaded to the question pool. The images are not uh, available to anybody who used those questions in a new site. I thought that had been fixed, Louisa. But you, Is you it? Think it's not, I think so. We might want to check on 10, you know, okay. 10 or in, because I think that may have already, I think that was fixed. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. Yeah, but double, we need to double check it, you know. If you knew the specific jurors, we could look them up and see. Otherwise, okay. we could retest it on, on one of the instances and see. Okay, so if the quizzes are uploaded to the question pool, where are the images reside? Are they in the question pool? Um, well, the images, I think, reside in resources. Um, but I think that it's that Sakai is now smart about when it copies the um, the questions over that then recopies the images over I think okay but I'm not sure I mean I All think right. that's we were testing something similar to that pretty recently that worked fine I mean really recently but I, I don't think it was exactly that but it was it wasn't the same ago and it was about it was more the use case that I tested was um, which worked fine was uh, testing was when you copied a test over from a another course site. So if you create a test with images in one site and then you copy it over to the next site, what used to happen is the images were still in the old site. So the mm. instructor would see the images, but when the student wants to take the test, they wouldn't. So that exactly. at least has been correct. Yeah. That's been but okay. um, the use case we're talking about is a little bit different. I don't remember testing that, so we need to look into that. Okay, I would uh, work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so moving on to the next issue, if that's okay. I notice we're getting low on time, Matt. I don't know if you want to cut me off or I can try getting through a couple more of these. No, Neil, I think that's great. Why don't we try to get through one or two more of these and then maybe this has been a great response and might motivate us to do this again in the near future because I think we've still got plenty more to talk about and I'm sure that if you guys are like me, you've got even more JIRAs on the back burner somewhere. So absolutely, go ahead, Neil. Okay, so uh, the next one is SAK29718. 
um, ability to reply to a message via email. Um, it looks like that's in the messages tool. So now we're not talking like the forums tool or the email tool, which can be, to me, kind of confusing. There's all these different ways of interacting. Um, and it's nice to have the tool choices, but it also gets a little confusing. Uh, so a common request from instructors is to have the ability to reply to a message directly from the message email notification. And that way they don't need to do the following steps. Log into Sakai, go to the site, go to messages, find the message and reply to it. This new functionality would allow users to respond to these messages through their email provider. So that sounds kind of cool uh, to me. I think that um, um, we do have something like that with the, the archive tool, right? Where you can respond directly to the archive tool it goes in. So it seems, is it overlapping some of that functionality? I, I don't know. And Terry writes, yay, then will we get rid of the email archive tool? <laughs> I think it would be really cool to combine, I think there's what, three message, three different messages tools, right? There's the email archive, uh, the email tool, which is the mail sender, and then there's the messages tool. I think it would be really cool personally if we like consolidated it and got one tool that just did whatever you wanted it to do. I imagine that's a lot of work though. But we definitely see some plus ones for that from Fawei, from Terry, and Obviously, I would agree as well. It may be a lot of work. It may be more work than we have room for at this point. But ideally, absolutely, I think that sounds like a great feature. Another plus one from Salwa. Uh, we also have a comment here from Adam that email archive sends to the entire site. Uh, the issue with a received message external to Sakai is to know who the reply should go to. Absolutely, that's a good point, Adam. Thanks for that. Right, that is a good point. That is the difference between the email archive and the and the messages tool. So, so it sounds that like that sound like that would require some work. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like this. The, the, what might be interesting in enhancing the messages tool, but I guess the question is whether there would need to be whether it would be helpful to have some. You know, sometimes it's better just to get if they if you know if we can find resources and it doesn't take much effort to, for example, address the two nine seven one eight issue. Maybe the right thing to do is just to to further evolve that, um, or is the better use of community resources to kind of try and rationalize the other, the other resources? So I don't know, the other tools. The final one Jose Mariano has in here is SAK 30079, and it's provide global setting for the option auto forward messages in the message tool, messages tool. Um, provide global setting for the option auto forward messages in the messages tool. Listen to their messages tool on. Provide a way for users to configure um, in just one time in a centralized way their email notifications received when using the option personal settings auto forward messages in the messages tool. We have many requests from users complaining they need to configure this email notification for each site that includes the messages tool. With the property, allow users to configure in a way, it's a kind of way by default, a user can set their configurations for email notifications globally. Other tools offer this kind of functionality from my workspace preferences notifications. Got it. That seems pretty reasonable. I guess they use, I guess it sounds like they use the uh, messages tool quite a bit. I don't know if that other does people do. Like use that tool a lot. Mm -hmm. Do other people on the call use that tool? extensively or much at all? Okay, so Terry indicates that they use it. I actually, we did a survey a couple of years ago. Let me see what it, let's see if I can bring that up real quickly and see what percentage. Let's see, survey. And Louisa has added plus one, so they are apparently using it at Marist also. So there's definitely some interest in JIRAs related to the messages tool. And again, we would definitely recommend to sign into JIRA, create an account if you haven't already, and vote these issues up um, so that we're aware that there's a lot of interest in them. And thanks, Neil, for posting a link to the tool survey results in the chat. Yeah, it looks like about half of the uh, half of the institutions that responded to that survey uh, used the messages tool, or a little over half. 
And Steven has added in the chat that they have heavy use at Wake Forest. So definitely some responses here just from the small sample of us that are on the call that people are using it. So that's good to know. Got about four minutes left at this point, so hang on to these other JIRAs that unfortunately we have not had time to get to today, and hopefully we will be able to work this into the schedule again. I think this has been really interesting and really illuminating. Obviously, there are so many JIRAs in Sakai Project JIRA that you can't really browse through them all, and so it's always nice to see some JIRAs that I have seen and worked with before and see some JIRAs that I haven't heard anything about before that I need to watch and remain on top of. So thanks everybody for bringing these and I hope that we will be able to do this again and talk about those that we didn't get to talk to today. Looking at our schedule going forward, obviously uh, next week we will not have a meeting um, due to the Thanksgiving holiday in the United States most people will either be on vacation on that day or will be preparing to go on vacation on that day so we anticipated that there would be a pretty low turnout so there will not be a meeting uh, next Wednesday November the 25th um, on December the 2nd we will resume and we're going to have a demonstration of some Morpheus testing is that right Neil yeah, that's right, and I, I need to double check to see who's going to lead that. I'm hoping I can get one of the uh, um, uh, folks who kind of set up the testing to do that. Uh, yeah, that's how that's the testing that we're doing right now in Morpheus. Awesome, that sounds really interesting. And then on December the 9th, the following Wednesday, uh, Stephen has suggested uh, that Wake Forest could demonstrate how they have managed to incorporate their student images into Sakai. Uh, Neil, do you know if we have anything else scheduled for that day, or can we go ahead and pencil that in? Um, I'm pretty sure we don't have anything scheduled. Let me look at Confluence to double check. Okay. Let's see. One second. Teaching and learning. Let's see. Here we go. Give me a couple of clicks. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting. Come on, Confluence. It's taking a lot longer than normal. Oh, oh yeah. Click. And no, we don't have anything scheduled for that day. Okay, so Stephen, if you could let your people know that we are a go uh, for that day, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much for volunteering that. And I guess that's all the business that we have today. Um, so. Again, thank you guys so much uh, for taking time out of your day to sit here and work through some of these JIRAs with us. I think it was a great conversation, and we touched on a lot of different topics and some different tools and some different ideas, uh, all of which are great. And we look forward to seeing you all in two weeks after the Thanksgiving holiday. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Matt. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks, Neil. Bye, everyone. Thank you.